Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me as we go through this Intec Soul Dawn. So let's get through how to uh, hook this thing up to your tow vehicle. So right up front, we're gonna ride on a uh, two and five sixteenths ball. And it is going to be just a slide coupler here. Very easy to use once you get it lowered down onto the ball. All you've got to do is pick up on the back here and slide that down and that's gonna latch on. Uh, to release it, it's going to be just the opposite. Pick up and pull back, and that's going to be released. To finish hooking up to your tow vehicle will be your safety chains, which do need to be crossed, and then they will clip onto the receiver hitch. We've got your safety breakaway cable for the electric brakes. If you were to uh, get disconnected from your tow vehicle, this is designed to yank out of the box that's mounted underneath here and engage the trailer brakes uh, to bring the trailer to a stop. And last but not least for hooking up is going to be your standard seven way for the RV. This is going to be controlling all of your lights, uh, running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and the electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is so equipped with a brake control. Now to crank the uh, tongue up and down, it's just going to be the top, top mount crank jack here. Um, very simple up and down on that. Now moving back behind the, on the tongue here, we do have some uh, information from the manufacturer. You're gonna have tire, uh, tire size, uh, recommended tire pressure, weights, VIN number, all that good stuff here on the uh, trailer frame. So take your time to look at all that and know that information. And just behind that, behind our sole cover here, this is gonna be where our dual propane tank setup is. To get these off, all you've gotta do is pull these clips, one on each side, and then slide the cover off. And inside you're gonna find your dual 20 pound propane tanks. Now these can be exchanged or refilled, whichever works best for you or whatever condition you might be in to do so. So let me show you how to get these out of here to do your, um, to exchange, to remove your cylinders. So first things first, make sure your service valves are shut off on the top of the cylinder. And then you can go ahead and disconnect whichever cylinder you're going to be removing. Loosen up the wing nut. You can take it all the way off or you can loosen it up just enough to be able to get the T-bar to go up. So you can then tip your cylinder out. And there you go. Now, so again, you can take this and either get it refilled or exchanged, whatever works best. Just anytime it's in transport, make sure it's in the uh, standing upright for your safety. And then to put it back in, it's gonna be just the opposite. Got to get it back in there. Go ahead and you can, uh, snug up this wing nut. Again, this doesn't need to be over tight, just snug. All you're trying to do is keep the cylinders in there. Go ahead and reconnect your service line. And then if you want to continue using that cylinder, you can then turn your service valve back on. Now this does have an auto changeover regulator. So the way this works is if you leave both cylinders on, it's gonna automatically pull from whichever cylinder this is pointing to first. When that one becomes empty, then it's gonna automatically start pulling from the other cylinder. So we like to recommend running one cylinder open, one cylinder closed, and that way you know when one cylinder is empty. And then all you have to do is take and switch this lever over to the other one, remove this cylinder, exchange it, replace it, and put it back on. And you just keep going back and forth between them and that way you always know how much propane you've got. That's pretty much that. Let me show you how to put the cover back on. When you set this in here, the bottom two pieces here sit on top of the two rubbers down there on the frame. And then all you've got to do is line up the pins and reinstall your clips. So much easier from the other side. Okay. Now this trailer is equipped with the 
uh, optional front windshield cover. I'll show you how to put that on later in the video, but let's move around over here to the off door side of the trailer. So right here up front, we've got a vent. This is gonna be for the battery. And then we've got your six gallon gas electric water heater. Now, a couple things on this, biggest thing here is gonna be uh, operation and then also how to drain it. Draining it's gonna be the anode rod, which is right here in the middle. All you've gotta do is make sure there's no pressure left in the water heater, either by using the pop-off valve or opening your hot water um, on the inside of the trailer. And then remove the anode rod and allow the system to drain out. It's a good time to check and inspect the anode rod and if it needs to be replaced, go ahead and do so. If you wanna run this on 110 electric to heat the water, if you're plugged into shore power, you're gonna use the switch right down here in the bottom left-hand corner that says on off on it. When you switch that to the on position, that's gonna turn the 110 heating element on and this will heat on 110 electric power. Um, always make sure there's water, heat, uh, water in your water heater before you turn it on. Um, other than that, just checking the uh, burn chamber here for insects occasionally is a good idea. Uh, bugs can get in here, block gas flow or the sparker and keep it from igniting on gas. And I'll show you how to light it on gas on the inside. So underneath in all four corners, you'll find your stabilizer jacks. So after you get the trailer leveled side to side and front to back, uh, you're gonna use your uh, stabilizer crank handle. You're just gonna run these down to the ground and snug them up. And moving back from there, we've got your sewer hose storage. You can store a decent sewer hose in there. Most of your premium sewer hoses, uh, either the ends will be too big or they'll be too long, but it is a good storage option for some items. And just up here on the sidewall, we've got your city water and freshwater tank fill. So to fill your fresh water tank, all you've got to do is remove this cap, put your water hose down in here and turn it on and fill it up either until it backwashes out or comes out of this little vent. And that will tell you that the onboard tank is full of fresh water. I'll show you how to use the water pump switch on the inside. Now, if you're gonna be in a campground where you have access to city water, you're gonna hook up to this connection right here with your water hose and a pressure regulator in line on that. And they've got the nice door on here that you can take this little flap, flip it to the side, and then you can lock this up. It just keeps the connection kind of neat and clean looking. Hose goes right in, and then you close that up on top of it. Keeps it all nice and neat. This vent right here is gonna be your furnace exhaust. Um, suburban furnace says hot on it because it does get hot anytime you're using your furnace. So watch little hands or your hands or making sure that you don't block it off with anything because that will cause uh, operational issues. Now these two Dometic covers right here are gonna be for your refrigerator. Uh, lower vent, upper vent. Upper vent's just gonna be for uh, inspection and cleaning purposes. Not a whole lot going on up there if you do need to get in it. And the bottom one down here, let me show you how to take these off. These two clips right here, all you have to do is push them up. And then you can pull this side off and out. So in here, uh, again, this is gonna be primarily for the service side of things. But if you do wanna get in here, you can inspect for bugs inside the burn chamber here. You can also check and make sure that your flame is lit if you're running on gas. Um, your 110 cord plugs in up over on this wall. Um, this is a uh, heat absorption fridge. So these are gonna take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to completely cool. So um, get them prepped overnight, get them ready to go. If you can have everything you're putting in them already chilled or cold, um, it's gonna help the efficiency of the fridge and keep everything trucking for you. When you put this back on, this side goes in first and then this one's just gonna fit over these tabs and then you just push those down to lock them on. So this black port right here on the side is for a portable solar hookup. Uh, all you gotta do is get a portable solar panel, plug it in and you'll be good to go for off grid. Uh, camping usually is where people use solar to keep up their 12 volt battery on the trailer so they can extend their stay without power. Uh, just below that's just gonna be a coax connection for an exterior satellite cable or antenna hookup. And then we've got our 30 amp service cord. Let me show you how this works. Got three prongs on here. One of them's kind of an L shape. Side of the trailer's got the same. 
All we're going to do is take those two L-shaped prongs and match them up. Give it a little twist to the right. That's going to do the initial lock on. And then we're going to take that ring and we're going to tighten that down. And that's going to give us a nice, good, tight connection. Uh, so we reduce that thing, chances of that thing getting coming loose or a loose connection, which can cause heat buildup and melting of your cord. So make sure you get a good, tight connection. So moving down from there, we're going to find our dump station. So to work this, uh, this is going to be, um, all you've got to do is take the bayonet cap off, hook your sewer hose on, run it over to the dump, and then you're going to just pull the valve here when you're ready to dump, and everything's going to go down with it. When, you when you're done, close the valve, and you can then either remove your sewer hose or keep on camping, whichever you're doing. Um, right here on the back end, we do have a quick connect spray port equipped with a uh, handle here. So this is a uh, quick connect. So let me show you how this works. So it's kind of like an air hose if you've ever worked with one. It's just uh, all you've got to do is push this collar back and then take that fitting and push it in and then release the collar and that's going to lock it on. It's best if you can relieve pressure on the water system before or after uh, before you hook this up. It'll make it a lot easier for you. All right, moving around onto the back side of the trailer. Parts you have involved on line one. Red not a whole lot. Line. Not a whole lot going on back here. Uh, this is where your license plate will mount up, and then you also have a uh, additional receiver hitch back here that you could put a hitch basket or something on. Maximum capacity of 100 pounds, including the weight of the basket or anything else that you put on there, bike rack, anything like that. All right, moving over to the door side of the trailer. Uh, let me show you how to work your entry step. So all you've got to do here to stow it for travel is pick up and push it in. And that's gonna drop and lock in to uh, get it out. So all you've got to do is pick up on the front and then pull straight out and all the way and then drop it down and that's gonna secure it for use while camping. Uh, these two little black cleats right here are going to be for the stabilizer legs for your Thule crown awning. And wheels and tires. Um, Intech recommends on your first trip tightening the wheel lugs at 10, 25, and 50. And then here at Princess Craft, we recommend at least every uh, time before you hit the road from a trip or going on a trip, check them, uh, check all five lugs, check your tire pressure, get everything, make sure everything's good to go for the road. We've got uh, two exterior 110 outlets. And then we've got a storage compartment here on the front. It's gonna be your stabilizer crank handle. And this is gonna be your awning crank. Uh, so let me show you how to extend the awning while we're here. So you're just gonna take this T and it's gonna fit right up into the awning crank here. And then all you've gotta do is crank it out. All right, so after you get your awning cranked out, to get your stabilizer legs down, if you just pull this piece out right here, it's gonna pull the whole leg kind of out and allow you to swing it out and down. Now the leg has two adjustments on it. One's gonna be your lock right here, and the other's gonna be this little push button for the uh, inner leg. So if you push that in, that's gonna allow another leg to come out. And then you can actually slide this thing over to the wall let me show you how to latch these in. So all you gotta do is take this black collar, slide it up. You're gonna drop the bottom portion of the foot in first and then push that down over it and that's gonna lock it to the wall. Now, you can extend this up and lock this leg into place. So to do so, this is actually gonna push back like that, so it's actually gonna kind of be pushed out and away from the leg. It's gonna feel a little weird. It's gonna feel like you're gonna break it, but that's how it works. Um, and then same thing to do the other leg. All you gotta do is pull it out, set it, and then adjust your height to set it. So to put it away, it's just gonna be releasing it, restowing all of your legs, swinging this back up in here, and pushing it in just like so.
And then all you've got to do is crank it back in for storage and you're ready to go. All right, and the last thing in here is going to be our front windshield cover. Let me show you how to put that on. So when you put the cover on, this side of the snap is going to go towards the trailer and this side's going to be what's exposed. So to put these on, all you've got to do is snap them onto the pins that are here. Just like that. And then you are ready to keep your front windshield secure or intact while you're driving. So in case you take a rock, it doesn't get broken. All right, so to get the cover off, um, these actually say lift the dot on them. So all you have to do is you'll see each one has a dot. If you can get your fingers in there behind it, just lift and it snaps Ed, right off. Two, please. Ed, right two. Just like that. So very easy. All right, that pretty much covers the outside of our Intex Sold On. Let's go check out the inside. All right, guys, so coming in our Intex Sold On here, um, using the screen door is very simple. It does latch to the entry door. Um, to get that to release, all you've got to do is push this back right here, and it's going to release from the entry door. And then you can close it up and then close your screen slider. And that's going to keep the bugs out, but allow you some excellent ventilation into this trailer. Uh, some natural air to get that thing to open. This can be closed. You can still get it out in from out here just by using this again on the outside here. That's just going to stow away. And then all you have to do is shut that back to the door and it's reattached. So just coming in here to the left of the entry door is going to be the pretty much every light that's in, um, in this trailer. So we've got our porch light, which is going to be, um, the light that's up here overhead, as well as our entry step light. Our exterior front light's the big blue light that's above the window. Our um, dinette accent, accent light is the one that's on the inside over there above the big front window. Our cabinet lights are gonna be the two blue lights on each side. Our kitchen light is the kitchen light here. And then our main cabin light is gonna be all of the puck lights that are on the ceiling. And that's going to be all of your light switches. Now moving over from there, we've got your uh, command control. So this is going to be for our tank monitors. We've got our battery, our fresh tank, and our black tank. So all you have to do is push the uh, button, and it's going to correspond on the lights of how much you've got going on there. Uh, so if you're going to want to dry camp or you're going to want to use water while you're traveling down the road, um, Using your water pump to get the water out of the fresh water tank is going to be uh, how you do that. So it's going to be the first switch here. All you've got to do is turn that on as long as you've got water in the fresh water tank. That's going to suck that water up and pressurize the system and it's going to be good to go. Now the water pump will pulse anytime you're using the water pump as the pressure drops and rises in the system. Completely normal. Moving over from there, we've got your uh, tank heater switch. So they've already equipped the trailer with a tank heater. So if you're camping in some uh, colder temperatures, you just flip that on. It's going to keep things from freezing. Over from there, we've got your water heater gas side. So if you want to light the water heater on gas, propane has to be on. Just flip that switch on. The water heater is going to go into ignition and light up and do everything on its own. If it does fail, this DSI fault light right here will turn on and tell you there was a problem with the ignition. And then the last one's going to be your second switch for the electric side of the water heater. So remember the switch on the outside of the water heater has to be on as well as this switch for the electric side to work. And that covers our command control unit. Now we've got storage drawers here at each of these. They just pull out. They've got um, soft clothes on them, so no slamming drawers or anything, um, which will bring us up to our two burner Dometic cooktop. So let me show you how to get this thing to light. It's very easy, just turn the knob to the light section, push the knob down and hold it. And you're gonna just push the sparker button right here in the middle. You're gonna hear that rapid ticking, that's the uh, igniter at the cooktop here. Um, once it lights, continue to hold that down for about another five seconds until the flame is well established and then let off and then you can set your flame temperature here, high, low, and do your cooking. Now, this is a glass cooktop cover, so this is not to be cooked on or anything like that. Um, when, you, when you get it, when you put it up for use, all you have to do is pick up, push it all the way back, and it's gonna drop in and kinda lock there so it doesn't fall down while you're cooking. 
Um, once the burners are cooled, to uh, put this back down, all you have to do is lightly pick up on it and then close it, and that'll close down. Behind our cooktop, you're going to find an outlet, which is going to be our GFCI outlet for the trailer. Um, it's got a test and trip, test and reset on it. Um, if the orange light is on, that means that that outlet has been tripped uh, by something that's been plugged into one of your outlets or even this outlet. To reset it, all you've got to do is push that button. That light should go off and everything should resume to be uh, working as normal. Overhead, we've got some speakers. We've got your Jensen radio that's going to be uh, for your DVD player, uh, your radio, Bluetooth connection, so you can uh, stream music to it. Uh, it basically does everything that you would expect a um, you know DVD player slash home theater type deal to do for you. Um, so Intec does use these cool little sink covers. To give you a little extra uh, countertop space or even like to put your dishes on to dry or anything like that just sits over the sink like this and gives you some countertop space and then they roll up really cool they just roll up and you can leave it there you can move it out of the way they're really pretty neat they look good um, can be used as a dish rack or whatever you see useful there uh, a couple storage compartments up here held with bungee cords for all that good stuff. To use your shade um, or all of your shades in this trailer, it's very simple. You're going to have a day-night shade. So all you've got to do is pull these straight down. This is going to be considered your day shade. It's kind of like a bug screen. It's going to allow some good natural lighting through it. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, again, it's going to be considered your day shade. Your night shade is going to be your privacy shade. It's going to be uh, darkening, so it's not going to allow near as much light through it. It's not going to allow anybody to see in the trailer at nighttime when you have the lights on. So it's going to be also for privacy. Um, and if you obviously want no shade, just slide them both up and you've got your window exposed. Now to use your faucet at your sink, for flow control, you're just going to take this stem and tilt it either towards the faucet for off or towards the wall for on. And then your temperature control is going to be towards you or towards the window uh, for temperature control. It does come with a sink stopper if you want to stop the sink up, hold water. And then underneath we do have a good amount of storage for you. Just remember you do have plumbing under there, so just always give caution whenever you're storing stuff where other things are. All right, so that'll bring me right up here over my head is gonna be our uh, max fan. So this thing can actually be controlled by the remote right here on the wall. You've got your main fan as well as speed button. So every time you push that, your fan speed is gonna increase one through four. Uh, to turn it off, you're just gonna push that and it's gonna automatically close the lid when you do that. The other two, you can actually just open and close the vent without any fan and uh, use it just as basically a vent with no fan. So let's go in here and check out the wet bath. So in here is going to be our toilet which is a foot flush. So down there the little pedal at the bottom if you want uh, when you get ready to use the toilet you're going to want to push that about halfway down that's going to put water in the bowl and keep it there. Once you're done, you're going to push that all the way down and that's going to actually open the valve on the toilet and allow everything to go down as well as rinse the bowl. And um, that's pretty much it on using the toilet. Make sure you're using a tank treatment anytime you're using the toilet. Um, to use your shower, it's just going to be two knobs, hot and cold, mixing valves uh, on the wall there. And then your shower head comes with a flow control. So you have on all the way and then kind of like a spray pattern change and then off for the shower head. This is completely adjustable. You just have to squeeze the little button that's on the side here and you can adjust this up and down. And then you can also move your soap dish up and down for height. Now your light overhead is controlled by the switch right here on the wall. And then you've also got a vent fan in here that's just a manual crank. And then the push button on it's going to run the little fan on board. 
so you can kind of you know pull any moisture or anything out that you don't want in there all right moving on around on the off door side of the trailer we've got your high point microwave turntable style nothing fancy here just a microwave put your stuff in set your time let it go our Dometic uh, three-way refrigerator inside got cool blue lighting when it's all up and going up top's going to be your freezer the rest of it's going to be your refrigerator portion let me show you how to operate this thing we've got uh six buttons up here uh first one here is going to be our power push and hold to turn it off when it's off the light will be off on the inside and to turn it back on just push the power button again and then now we can cycle through our three different modes so the outlet here we're looking one or the plug looking one is going to be our 110 operation. The flame is going to be our LP gas operation. And then the last one is going to be our battery operation. Now, uh, gas and electric are going to be your primary sources. Battery is going to be your backup. If you don't have any other way to do the other two modes, battery is going to be a maintainer only. It's not going to cool and it is extreme. It pulls a lot of power on your batteries. So we recommend it only if you absolutely have to use it. All right, the other two buttons, we've got our temperature set, which is gonna be this one. So you just push the buttons and cycle through your uh, five lights here. Obviously the more bars you've got, the colder it is. Just set it wherever you're comfortable. And then the last one here is gonna kind of be a uh, warning light or a notification light. If this detects usually on the gas side an ignition failure or something going on there, that thing's gonna beep. Uh, you can push that to reset and start the ignition process over. Moving just below our refrigerator is going to be our power distribution panel. Inside, you're going to find your 110 breakers and your 12 volt fuses. These are just standard blade automotive fuses. These can be purchased pretty much anywhere. And um, Intec has done a good job at labeling everything over here so you know what everything goes to. Again, if you're having some power issues, something's not working, check your breakers, check your fuses, uh, depending on what it is, and hopefully that's all it needs. This is going to be your furnace output right here, so anytime you're running your heat, all your heat's going to come out of this guy right here, so don't cover it in the wintertime. And then this right down here is going to be our uh, CO propane detector for leaks or CO gas. Uh, if that thing starts going off, usually means that you've got either an LP gas leak or CO in the cabin here, which you don't want. Um, so let's just move on around. We'll cover the air conditioner as we get back around to the thermostat. Um, right here on the wall next to your refrigerator is gonna be where we find a charge station. It's gonna be a 12 volt outlet and two USB ports there for charging. We've got 110 outlet next to it, and then we've got our battery disconnect switch. So if you're gonna be putting this thing away in storage for a while, all you've gotta do is take this and turn it to the off position, which is gonna be up. That's going to disconnect your battery and, and extend the life of it. When you're using it, have it in the on position. Overhead, we do have storage. I think. What's going on here? Yeah, there we go. I don't understand why they don't put hinges that stay open on these. <laughs> Sorry, I get off track sometimes. <laughs> uh, so overhead here, we've got uh, storage. This one is held with a pretty good magnet. So just give it a little tug. It's gonna pop open for you. And you've got storage inside. Again, your shades here are gonna operate the same, uh, but your window can operate in two manners on this one. So let me show you how to do that. Just for normal use, you're just gonna pull this out towards you. And then you can slide this window back and leave your screen there for uh, keeping the bugs out. And it is also your fire exit window. So to do that, you've got to open up both of these red tabs here. Get them all the way open. And then you can push this out. You can push the whole window out, which opens up more and allows you to crawl out. And then all you've got to do is snap these back shut. Now we do have another light switch right back here. It's gonna be another main light switch that you can use uh, since this is also your bed area. So you don't have to go back up to the uh, front of the, or the rear of the trailer to turn the lights on and off. And it's also got your accent lighting switch for this light that's under here as well. 
There's another, remember the other switch that's labeled dinette up there as well. Um, the front big window is really nice. Um, again, when you're ready to go to bed for privacy, they have equipped with a shade. So you can pull that down and keep your privacy while you're in here made into a bed at night. Overhead, we do have more storage. And we've also got your filler cushion up here for the bed. And then more storage over on the door side. A couple of speakers. And we've got our table here. So let me show you how to take all this up and make this into your bed area. So first things first, we've got to get our table out of the way. This is very easy. All you've got to do is jiggle this tabletop off. Set that aside. Now this post actually kind of tightens to the floor. So you're just going to turn it to the left. And just keep going until, so this thing's got to line up. So it's going to come loose and then eventually it's going to line up with the uh, slot in the floor and allow you to remove it from the floor. So once we get that out of the way, now we can make this thing down into a bed. So to make it into a bed, all you've got to do is take this filler piece right here and it just fits right under the cushion. These feet right here are going to sit um, just underneath the cushion. Now you can leave the table in place and keep it there or you can take it up and um, use it that way. Either way is up to you. Now, um, under this cushion over here, which is next to the refrigerator, let me pull this up and show you what's under there. It's a, got some stuff you may want to know about. Okay, so under here, we're gonna find your fresh water tank, your water heater, your battery box, and your water pump, and all your uh, water bypass and drain valves. So on your valves, these two right here are gonna be your low point drains. This is gonna be your fresh water tank drain. This is gonna be your uh, one of your bypass valves for uh, allowing you to shut off the uh, pump suction to the uh, fresh water tank. And then you would turn this one on, which then allows you to switch your pump suction to this, which is for the um, antifreeze solution. This goes right down into your jug of antifreeze and does that there. And then on the water heater, they're kind of hard to see, but they're tucked back up underneath the edge of the bench here. There's a valve at the uh, top here. And then there's another one down on the cold side. Those are gonna be your bypass valves for the water heater again for the winterization process. But that's where all this stuff is in here. Um, always with, always with uh, winterizing. If you have any questions, just give us a call. We can kind of walk you through most of it um, and get that done or we can do it for you. Um, so let me get all this put back together and then we will go over the last couple things in here. All right, so overhead's gonna be your air conditioner. Now this thing's got a few different ways for it to get air out to cool you off. It's got little flaps on each side here at the ends that you just open up and close. It's also got uh, vents on the side here that you can open and close. And then it's got this uh, one right here that'll allow it to blow straight down. And you just use that to open and close there. Now it does have a filter in here um, that does need to be cleaned periodically. If you have a little flat blade screwdriver, that'll make life a little easier. Just gotta get this covered down right here. And attached you will find your filter once you get it removed there you just use some uh, warm soapy water mild soap to uh, clean this out rinse it really good allow it to dry before you put it back in once it's good and dry you're just going to reinstall it back onto this piece here and then this is gonna fit right back up in here. These two are gonna go towards the center of the air conditioner. Those gotta go in first. And then everything else is just gonna kinda snap in. Like so. 
All right, now we know how to uh, maintain and use the airflow. Let me show you how to run it. So your Dometic thermostat is right here on the wall underneath the TV. And uh, these aren't really push buttons. They're gonna be just touch. You just have to touch them and you'll be able to cycle through your modes. So your first mode is gonna bring up fan where you can cycle through low, auto, or high. We always recommend just leaving fan speed set to auto. And then next down will be your cool mode. See the snowflake down in the bottom. Here you're just gonna select your desired room temperature and leave it here. The fan is automatically gonna fire up and get everything going. And like I said, just select your desired room temperature and that's what it's gonna to try to achieve. Now to run your furnace, just push it and set until you find furnace mode. Again, select your room desired room temperature and the furnace will fire up and do its thing. To turn everything off, just make sure it says off down here in the bottom right hand corner and that's off. That's pretty much it for the um, air conditioner. Also under the TV, we've got another 110 outlet. Um, you are gonna get remotes for the TV and the radio. All right, so the TV is stowed against the wall. It is on a swivel mount, so to get it out, all you gotta do is grab both sides of the TV, give it a little bit of a tug, and that's gonna allow it to swivel out so you can uh, tilt it towards the bed. On the back, you're gonna find all your hookups. Um, this is gonna be for your audio video for the DVD player. We've got your antenna input right here on the uh, booster plate. So if that light is off, that's gonna allow a cable signal from the exterior of the trailer to pass through the circuit board that's in here. If that's on, it's gonna be using your rooftop antenna to pick up your over the air signal. It's a 110 TV, so you will be need shore power to run it or a generator. And other than that, this TV is equipped with HDMI and all the goods that you would expect on any TV from today. To store it back against the wall, just make sure all your cables and everything are out of the way. And then we've got to get this little piece right here to tuck back into that receiver there. So just swing it around, give it a good little uh, push. You should feel it kind of pop in and now you're stored for travel. Uh, below the TV, you do have another little storage cabinet. On the side of that cabinet, we're going to find your fire extinguisher. Biggest thing with the fire extinguisher is checking it periodically to make sure it still has pressure. To do so, you're just going to push this little green button on top and make sure it pops back up. If it does, everything should be good to go. And last but not least, we have your CO smoke alarm mounted up here right by the entry door. Again, this is a safety device. It's gonna be battery operated. Check your batteries, test it, replace your batteries as needed. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. And that should cover the inside of your Intex Hold On. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with us as we went through the Intech Sold On. Again, I'm Cody with Princess Craft RV, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call.